this is Pete or Kenshin1913 along with Mom. And today we're doing another cooking with Kenshin1913. And today we're going to have a two for one special today. You're going to learn how to make two things uh, a Russian coffee and a what? A candy plop. Yeah, we call them a chocolate plop or candy plop. And this is something my mom invented. Well, she made. Although I'm sure other people have made it, but this, this is what we call it. And a Russian coffee, which is a. A lovely uh, chocolatey it's, dessert it's drink. It's a chocolatey coffee drink. Yeah. Uh, we've been making it for years. So let's get on it. We're going to start off making our chocolate plops. And the first thing you're going to start with are a candy wafer. Now this kind of a wafer, you can buy in any craft stores like Michael's, Joann's, uh, AC Moore, any I'm sure wherever you may be that there, there's yeah. different names, but you can just buy chocolate or use regular uh, chocolate, you, or you could actually use a big um, chocolate bar, bar yeah. uh, a Hershey bar. Okay, so the you... next thing I'm going to have is some crushed up pretzels. Now, with the crushed pretzels, all, all it really is is uh... just crushing them up. Yeah. Um, this time I'm actually doing some walnuts. People who are allergic to nuts, so you don't have to add them. No. You make your own creation in anything that you mm. want. I'm like, going to add some raisins, and I'm going to also add some cranbe uh, cranberries, dried cranberries. You could add peanuts, you could add coconut. You can your add anything. Your heart's desire this, is what you can put in this. Yes, this recipe is super duper versatile. I'm doing it in chocolate this time. You could do it in white chocolate. You could do it in flavored chocolates. Um, dark sky, chocolate? Yep, dark chocolate. The sky's the limit in whatever you choose to make. Yeah, super duper versatile. So what is the first thing we need to do? Okay, what I did is a, an easy way to do a double boiler. Now sometimes you can... What is a double boiler a double for boiler, people who don't know? Okay, double boiler is one pan with water underneath. Usually it's another pan that goes on top. And then there's some type of a mixture in it. It's a, a, usually a cream kind of a mixture that can't directly be on the flame mm -hmm. so that you want the heat from the water to do whatever the cooking yeah. has to be done. Yeah. Now, in some places, we'll tell you to do um, melt the chocolate in the microwave. That's fine, too. Yeah, so right now we've got a pot of water. About basically, a, quarter of a quarter of it filled. Yeah, basically... We had it boiling, but we had to shut it off. Uh, we're going to turn it back on, right? Mm -hmm. And you would just put the chocolate on here. Now, and it's important for this thing to be heat resistant. Yes. Not, you know, it's not going to melt on you. Like, make sure it's like a... This this is happens to be a Corel, um, or you want to use a Pyrex. Yeah, uh, any, um, anything that's bowl. pretty much heat resistant. And you, you want do. something that's going to stay on top of your pot, mm -hmm. not wiggle all around, so it kind of fits pretty well. Mm-hmm. So yeah, all my mom did with those uh, pretzels was she took regular pretzels, whatever kind you like, and just smashed them. And as you uh, will be able to see, the chocolate will start melting as we turn on the heat. And yeah, this is basically a double boiler. Nothing, nothing too, di uh, excuse me, nothing too difficult. And what you don't want to do with any kind of chocolate is you never want to get any water um, mixed into it mm -hmm. because it'll. Um, solidify the chocolate yeah, and on then you that's and it's it. very hard to work with. It's pretty much game over. Um, if that happens, you know, those those of you who are used to working with chocolate, you can actually add a, a pinch of um, or a few drops of uh, vegetable oil, um, something that will not have any taste to it, mm -hmm. and, um, and then keep mixing your chocolate so that mm. um, it'll get soft again. So yeah, this episode is going to be all about dessert. Dessert and adding chocolate. Yeah, because you could, you can really, you could be like the king or queen of like the party if you bring, if you bring these kind of recipes. Because again, this is, this recipe is like super duper versatile. And the fact that anything, you can put anything in, in, in this, uh, these chocolate plops. You can, like raisins, you can put cranberries, nuts, pretzels, hell, you can put peanut butter, you can do, uh, you can do little cookies if you want it. Yep, crushed up cookies. Yeah. I'm turning Think my... of it as like a chocolate lover's granola. Yeah. Um, 
this is not a lot of chocolate that I have in here. This is probably about a quarter of a bag. Mm -hmm. um, How much would we use? Nor normally, use? I would do a half a bag, a whole bag of Which those. Which would probably be like a, a cup, maybe, of chocolate. Oh, uh, no, more more than that. I'm not quite sure what it is. But you'll see. They, they come in, uh, I believe it's uh, pound mm -hmm. bags. And, um, even if so you don't use the, even if you don't use the, uh, like say you're using a chocolate bar, probably half of the cho chocolate bar. Would it be depends on how many, how yeah. many plops you want to make. Yeah. And as you can see, this is melting very nicely. It, nice it and looks, creamy. It looks really good. Now, this is another thing you could do if you were having a party. You can melt some chocolate and dip some uh, strawberries or fruits in it yeah we had a we had a party and we ended up getting the pretzel rods and so we had um a chocolate um melting pot mm -hmm. we had uh pine fresh pineapple we had um fresh marshmallows we had graham yeah. crackers we had the pretzel rods we had strawberries um people do um uh grapes mm -hmm. the 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 you can do it's whatever. endless yeah you endless can do whatever you want okay so this is done now we're going to carefully take this off the heat put it right there and then i'm just going to dump all my stuff mm -hmm. and it's super duper simple look at this like like how easy is this like it's you know what it's like sort of healthy for you but it's just so damn delicious because you got raisins you got Craisins, you got nuts, and chocolate's pretty good for you too if you have it in moderation. Everything in moderation is really the key to life. It truly is. So now what we gotta do? Just mix it all up. Get it all coated very great. Mm-hmm. Now there's a recipe similar to this called like white trash, right? Mm -hmm. And basically, it's white um, chocolate, and you use like oh, different kind of cereals. Yeah, different and... kind of sweet cereals, and um, oh man, I forget what else is in it, but it is delicious. Well, we might we might show that off. Yep, yeah, one day. Now I'm just gonna um, go get my cookie sheet, and yeah, then we're just we gonna plop a, these uh... on here. Okay, here we go. We're just gonna get a teaspoon of these. Plop them on a parchment paper or um, wax paper. Yeah, depending on what you have. Make sure you're on a cookie sheet. Now these look yum. I'm not a big fan of nuts, but these are delicious. Yeah, and so basically, you just got to plop them on, and you got yourself... Now you gotta let these cool, obviously. Yeah, because the, the chocolate will harden up. And let the chocolate harden. But you know what's so great about these? You get the, you get the salty. You get the chocolate. You get the, you get the nice texture from the raisins, and the raisins or the cran, cranberries and the nuts. Now, if you like more, if you want to make a bigger plop with more chocolate, of course you're gonna you're gonna have more chocolate mm -hmm. and and more. either less of mm. the the ingredients that you put in so that you'll have mm -hmm. more chocolate to it. Now let me ask you this, Mom. Can you throw can you throw some of this stuff in the freezer? You could put it in After... the freezer for yeah, uh, you can do it on small trays and you can put it in the freezer. No, I to mean get like hardened. yeah, yeah, that's what I meant to get hard. Mhm. Mm you could even put it in the refrigerator if you wanted yeah. to. So yeah, look at again, versatility in this recipe. And if you brought if you made these a few hours before you went to some sort of party or something, and you brought them, people would think you're like the king or queen of the party. And then you'd have this drink that you could be like, bam, I got something else here. I got drinks and dessert. We're going to have a lovely time. Now, we just made a few of these, but as I say, if you use the whole bag, you're going to make quite, gonna make quite a, a bit for, for a party. Now, i got to find a place to put this last one in here. Yep, so these we're just going to let cool off. And we're going to actually make our Russian coffee. This is our cat, Miss Honey. She is she is a six-toed cat, and I figured I'd show off the cat. She's Why the in hell here not? Helping us. Yes, she is. See, Miss Honey. Yep, she is what they call a Hemingway cat, and she uh, she. 
has six toes on each of her fingers. I mean, on each of her paws. Miss Honey. Meow. Now you don't want to say anything. Anyways, we'll be right back. Um, we're we're gonna be making our next um dessert, which or is drink or whatever. Drink, which is uh, Russian coffee. I'm not quite sure why it's called Russian coffee, but I have been making this for many many years since my children were little. My children also always seem to like a little bit of coffee, so sometimes we would give them a special treat. We wouldn't use um, regular coffee, of course, we didn't want them to have the caffeine, so I would do um, decaffeinated coffee. Mm -hmm. um, but the ingredients are, um, this is, happens to be instant coffee. Yeah. Um, you could also use brewed coffee, of course. You're going to use uh, chocolate a chocolate syrup. syrup. Um, sugar a or, bit of sugar. or a sweetener um, of your choice. Half you don't even you don't even have to use that, do you? Uh, you I put a little bit in. Okay. Uh, half and half, and some spray cream. Some whipped cream. So our water has boiled. First thing, yeah, you gotta do is boil some water. Yep. Now what? Uh, is next? Now we're gonna add one teaspoon of crystals, the the coffee crystals, mm -hmm. to our cup. And you could use decaffeinated um, if you choose. As a, and, and as I mentioned, you can use uh, regular brewed coffee as well. Uh -huh. We're so going what? to add next just a maybe a, not even a half a teaspoon of sugar. Yeah. Not a lot because with the chocolate sauce, you're already getting sweetness. Okay. Chocolate syrup. Now we're going to add a nice dollop of chocolate syrup. Okay. Mm-hmm. Maybe this was called Russian coffee when they put vodka in it. Maybe who knows? I really don't. But know. anyways, now we take right, our boiling water. Now we're water. taking our boiling water, filling it about halfway. All right. So now you mix that around. Mix it very well. You got the chocolate. You got the coffee. You got a little bit of sugar. Now this is a delicious, again, dessert drink, and I don't know, right now in Connecticut where we live, it is very cold as it is the winter, and uh, it does get quite cold in, in the Northeast, and um, yeah, this We're drink. We're doing plain half and half, Yeah. and I mix, I shake my half and half. Uh, my work colleagues laugh at me because um, I shake it, but when you pour it, it makes a real nice thick froth after shaking it. Mm -hmm. So we're going to add that to our coffee. And this drink will totally warm your bones in the middle of winter. This is something... See, it almost looks like a cappuccino. Yeah. And then we're going to add a nice little Dollop. squirt of whipped, whipped cream. cream. And, and I bet you one of our kitties is going to come flying because they love whipped cream. They think that it's their treat. Yeah. And look at that, huh? Doesn't that and look that's, delicious? And that's fun to that's share Russian with, coffee. Uh, with a, as a dessert um, coffee. <laughs> um, share it with your friends, your family. Uh, on a cold winter's evening. Oh yeah. Okay, we um, got the plops. They're all done, and mm -hmm. here they are on my sheet, um, on my yep. uh, plate. And I actually uh, put them. Uh, as Pete said, it's really cold here mm -hmm. in Connecticut. I actually put them outside on my deck for like not even uh, two minutes, and they um, yeah, completely luckily, solid. Got luckily, solid again. luckily none of the squirrels came around. And then finally, we got a Russian coffee here. I don't know if I can. Actually, show this. Mm, uh, I can't, but trust me, there's coffee in here. Russian coffee. And, well, you, uh, you ended up seeing yeah. um, how we made yeah, it. Yeah, I, I think I did a pretty good job of filming that. Anyway, so let's try. I'm not a fan of nuts, so my mom's going to try the plops while I drink the coffee. Very good. Oh, that is good. I like it. You get a little bit of the, uh, you get a little bit of the chocolate in it. Mm -hmm. it tastes very, very good. What about you there? I love these, so yeah, they're great. But um, yeah, this is kind the of salt like, and the sweet are wonderful. This is kind of like a Dunkachino. If mm -hmm. you've ever been to Dunkin' Donuts and had one of them, it's sort of like that. It kind of got a little bit of a, a little bit of a flavor of it. So yeah, this is a delicious drink, and uh, delicious chocolate 
that you could bring to any par any winter party to warm yourself up. So this has been Pete or Kenshin1913 along with Mom. And this has been another cooking with Kenshin1913. Enjoy and happy eating. Mm.